Good morning, everybody. Welcome to part 16 of my Brandywine refight using GMT's Great Battles of the American Revolution. Uh, a lot going on, a lot happening. And I do want to point out a few things. I made a couple errors in the last episode and also forgot to do something. Uh, you got, let's start with uh, what I forgot to do. Up here we had a combat. We had the British Dragoons going against some Patriots up here. I forgot to resolve this combat. Basically, it was just a cavalry withdrawal. The Dragoons withdrew to this position. They skirted the woods, and they're now in this location. So there was no real combat uh, there. And in addition, over here, let's take a look. We do have something I totally forgot to do. Uh, let's zoom in here. If you remember in the last episode, we had a... Uh, the king's own regiment of foot was in this position and was uh, almost entirely surrounded. Uh, it got a retreat result, used momentum to get that. Uh, the previous result was a little bit uh, worse for them, I believe. And anyway, they retreated to this position. And that's where I ended it. I forgot that whenever you retreat across the Brandywine, uh, you have to retreat a second time. You basically are disrupted and have to retreat an additional three hexes after this initial retreat. Even though the original result was a retreat, which is you only uh, move back one hex, uh, if you do that across a non-Ford Brandywine hex, you have to become disrupted and retreat three more hexes. And I forgot to do that. Which is odd, because I did do it earlier, up in this position here, when we had troops attacking here. I just totally forgot. Uh, so, basically, what's going to happen here is, ultimately, this unit will be captured, unfortunately. Uh, the reason for that is because it cannot retreat, uh, because of stacking limitations. Now, however, there is an option. If I take a step loss, which will give up, uh, it'll deplete the army morale even more than this result, uh, it will allow me to actually retreat. And basically, it's just it counts as a one-step loss. The unit retreats as normal. And this allows them, with two strength points in this case, uh, to move into one of these hexes to avoid overstacking, and which I could do. But it's an option. I don't have to do that. I could instead take the capture result. Uh, which I'm going to take. So this unit will count as captured uh, for failure to retreat. And by choice, I don't want to go into these other. Uh, I'm going to go. I don't want to go through these other stacks. And basically, that's just to avoid e an even worse result on the army morale uh, for the British. It will deplete me even further. So we don't want that. So we're just going to take the loss and have these guys uh, be captured. And with that, we're going to get into the. Back to the battle, actually. And brief overview. It is the top of turn nine. The Patriots have initiative. They go first. Uh, they went last in the previous turn, which means they're getting two turns in a row. Basically. So this is a good opportunity for the Patriots, I think. Um, move this guy back. He doesn't belong there. Uh, Patriots are in control of the Ford, as you can see. Right down in here. Not that that means anything, really, at this point. Uh, I think what we're going to do... Um, I don't want to push too hard down here. I think our strength, as far as the Patriots are concerned, is in defense. And we don't want to get too aggressive over here. So we're just going to shore up our defenses where needed. we got Gniffhausen over here trying to come across uh, the primary forward at Chad's Ferry. Uh, we're going to stand up to him. Right now there's only a strength one unit uh, on that forward, protecting them. I'm going to reinforce that, and we'll see what we can do. I'm going to reinforce this whole defense area along the forward, so there is that. Uh, hopefully we'll rally this disrupted unit. I'll have to check for more disrupted units. I don't think there is any. So I'm not going to get too crazy down here. I was considering a little diversion attack. <clears throat> In fact, I've been considering this for some time now, coming across the Brandywine. Like I've said before, I'm a very impatient commander. Uh, but I don't think I'm going to do that because I don't want to get myself out of position and uh, give the British an opportunity to take out some units. Even though there's some batteries of guns here relatively undefended. Well, they're not really undefended. That's a pretty weak unit, strength one, protecting these guns. And it uh, be nice to capture some guns. It really boosts the morale uh, for the Patriots. But 
you know, that's that. So I don't think I'm going to do anything aggressive here. Uh, and the British do actually have gray down here with two uh, parade order regiments of foot. So that would be a concern. If I did come across, I'd have to deal with these. So, yeah. As far as Sterling is concerned up in the north, which we can see here, uh, again, I'm going to look for local opportunities to take advantage of. And there is one right here. There's a Strength 2 British unit, um, which looks pretty vulnerable. I think there's a Strength 5 stack here for Patriots. So if we can continue that and finish him off, that would be good. This unit is looking also vulnerable. It's a Strength 4, however. Uh, right now, currently, the Patriots have managed to hold their ground and push back the initial assault, if you will, the British. And that's a good thing. Cornwallis himself has fallen back to this position here. And, yeah, I don't want to get too aggressive, but I think this is where I would get at least a little bit aggressive. We'll see. And there's some a Strength 5 British unit here of light infantry coming across the fields, led by Howe and the Coldstream Guards. They're trying to cut across this run and push up the left flank, uh, get to the meeting house. There's also a combat up here I have to resolve, a bunch of pinned units. Uh, I think the Patriots have advantage there, at least in numbers. Uh, the British Cavalry are trying to capture some Patriot guns, uh, which they were successful at previously. They did capture a battery, but the other cannons have since moved on, the other Patriot guns. So, kind of a moot point here. We'll see what happens as I resolve this combat and what I do. So I think I'm just going to shore up my line, look for local advantages, take advantage of it and attack. we got to get some success for the Patriots. Right now they are in level 6 in morale. Let's take a look at that. This of course is the current situation. Both are within the fatigued zone. Both sides will uh, suffer a minus 1 on printed unit morale ratings. Uh, so this is good for the Patriots. They're making a comeback here. They've jumped up to six. So they're on even footing with the British at this point. Both armies are fatiguing. So, yeah. So let's get these Patriots moved and see what develops uh, as far as combat from all that movement. All right, folks, let me get into the rallies and the movement, get that all taken care of, and we'll see what's... Uh, what, we're, what it's going to look like at that point. All right, got all the movement and rallies done. The Patriots were successful at rallying this unit back here. Uh, the unit's printed morale is plus one, and it's suffering a minus one for army morale. It's under the fatigue zone. So it was zero modifier. Needs greater than a four. I think it rolled an eight. So it rallied, which boosted the army morale. They're now at seven. And now we're all set up for the defensive artillery fire for the British as well as the rifle fire. Let's take a look down here at the Brandywine and see kind of what I did. As you can see here, I kind of, like I said, moved up some forces along the, the creek, uh, especially at the primary fords here. I've got a strong position here at the ford. I think it's a total of six strength points. That's five. That's okay. And they're supported over here by another two strength points. Uh, and right here across from Gniffhausen is a strength five as well. Uh, no, it's strength six. There's a three, a two, and a one right here at this ford. So uh, we've matched him there. In fact, we have the advantage in strength points anyway across that ford. There will be a fight here, folks. Uh, I will be attacking in Ifhausen's position. And I wasn't able to get everything I wanted to do uh, to get done as far as movement is concerned here. But I'm, I'm happy with this. I did move up my reinforcements. Those two units of militia, uh, if you remember, came on from point E up there off camera. And one thing I did do is near that rocky hill, uh, I am kind of deploying one of those militia units here. Uh, in anticipation of anything coming up across the creek this way, because I know there is another battalion of Frasers coming up here at point F. They might come across. Who knows? But I don't want nobody seeping through. And this is also a good defensive position, or a good reserve position, rather, uh, in case something goes bad over here. And Ginnifhausen does actually force a crossing. We will see. Uh, so, yeah, that's the situation. As far as artillery is concerned for the British, they are next. They get to fire. Uh, they can have all these guns. Probably nothing special here. It's going to be some... Uh, 
pot shots, especially over here, is where I think they will focus. They have strength three and strength two artillery batteries. Uh, they will be able to see, well, they can see, uh, Wayne here on top of the Proctor Heights. They might combine and attack that again. In fact, this unit as well, this two battery, can also do that. So again, they're going to continue putting down some hurt on Proctor's battery position. Uh, optionally, they could fire down here at the Ford in preparation for uh, attacking. We will see. And there's really no rifle fire here. Uh, if there is any, it'd have to be over here with that stack, and I don't think there is. You have to be adjacent to shoot with your rifles. So there is none, and I don't think Niffhausen has any. No. The only rifles the British have are right here with uh, Ferguson's. And, yeah, so that's what it looks like over here. And also, a little further to the north, I did engage these Dragoons, which were on cavalry withdrawal. Now the, the thing with this is the, the, the Dragoons cannot use a cavalry withdrawal a second time, or at least when they're marked as with a cavalry withdrawal marker. So they can't escape this time. So we're going to go into this combat. I moved up my infantry. They can't escape. They'll have to fight two to one odds. We'll see what happens with that. Both are plus one in morale ratings. So we'll see what happens. Just a little side fight here. As far as up here is concerned, with Howland Sterling squaring off, uh, you'll notice Washington has finally made his way from Dewarthen all the way up to this position. Lafayette is with him, of course. Uh, he will be playing a role in the combats to come. I don't know to what degree he'll play in this one. Uh, he is adjacent, but so is Pulaski. Special rules for him. Uh, uh, Demi-brigade leader, something like that. I'll have to look that up and I'll fill you in when we get to combat. Uh, but there's special rules for him. Uh, in addition... I also moved up this unit, the North, North Carolina unit, which was down at Washington's headquarters. So he is also uh, getting himself in position. And these guys are protecting those guns. Put that on the top to remind me where the cannon are. And, yeah, I did engage the British in these locations. As you can see, I do have a local advantage here of strength six against one. We'll see what happens. These guys are rifles. They will be able to fire first. And also down here, I have a strength 11 going against a 4. And down here, we have a strength 5 going against a strength 2. So you can see the Patriots are getting some local advantages here, um, tactically, against the British. And hopefully, they'll get some success And as Howe continues to push forward. Uh, also take note for the British, there is some Jaegers up here that have been slowly making their way through uh, on the other opposite side of this marsh area and again you cannot move through this is impassable terrain the marsh locations on the brandywine map uh, i don't think i've pointed that out so yeah we're all set up we've got a combat up here to fight we've got some rifle fire here uh no cannon fire the british are in no don't have their batteries of guns set up anywhere over here uh, so i don't believe there will be any uh, this unit might this battery of guns, it's in range of this stack, and it can see through this, and it can see through this. So yeah, I think they will be able to fire uh, this unit here, this cannon, too far away. So this battery here, prob is, I'm probably going to fire with. And I don't know what's in this stack, if there's any guns. So there will be some artillery fire up here. And where else are we looking? Some guns right here that will also fire defensively. Let me put them on the top to remind me. So, yeah, we do have some artillery fire from this location. Well, here's another one. I have more guns in position than I thought. Uh, the British will be firing with their guns. They have this battery, this battery, and this German battery as well to fire with. This one is blocked because of units. Can't fire. And I don't think there's any guns here. And, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, we got some artillery fire for the British over here. Uh, no rifle fire. Okay, let's resolve all that fire. Okay, got all that fire taken care of, and none of the artillery batteries for the British were effective. I did double up on these two to fire in this strong Patriot position. Uh, no effect. Also, these German... This German battery also fired, skirting those two hexes. Uh, 
and was also ineffective. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Let's go over to Brandywine and see what the situation is there regarding fire. On this side, pretty much the same thing. The only uh, effective artillery was put on from this location here. Uh, they got a retreat result on this position, which is on the upper slopes. I believe both of these batteries fired on that position, so it was strength 4 firing into this location. Uh, they didn't go for counter battery fire, they went against the infantry, and they got a retreat result. This unit fell back 1 hex, so it is what it is. Also take note, there is some artillery fire here from the Tories firing this position. Again, these are both top of slopes. Um, down here, line of sight is pretty much blocked. There wasn't a whole lot going on. You can see these batteries down here and also in here, where I believe Grant is located. And I did fire in this position with this battery, I believe. And also took some shots on Proctor's battery position up here with Wayne with some of the batteries. Again, not effective. Just can't generate those high die rolls, which you need to score those hits. Uh, Okay, and that, that was also it for rifle fire, too. Basically, uh, wasn't any, at least in this location. Uh, we're going to go to close combats, so we'll jump right into that. We're going to have a strength 6 here, I believe, uh, you know, led by the old 11th. Actually, I don't know if he's going to be the lead unit. Parker, which is plus 1 light infantry. Uh, they will be attacking Gniffhausen's position. Newhouse will be able to use full tactics there. And it's going to be across a primary Ford. So there is this fight to resolve. I think it somewhat favors the Patriots. We'll see. Uh, and that's it. Again, let's focus on defense here. I'm not getting too aggressive. Let the British come to me. We'll see what they can do. Uh, so that's about the only close combats on this side. And if we pan over just a little bit, up here on the left, I will have this combat to fight as well. Strength 1 against Strength 2. Uh, yeah, both plus 1 morale. And Dragoon's being attacked in the woods by some infantry. So, I think that's going to favor the Patriots there. Once again, over here, I do have these combats to fight. Uh, I have substantial odds here. Uh, if I use this stack against him, that's probably likely... I'll have considerable advantage. I think that'll be enough. I think I have strength six. No, five. Five to two. I think that's enough because what I want to do is, let's see, I'll have strength 11 against four. All right, so that's greater than two to one here. And then I'll have an attack over here. Um, yeah, I think that's what the combats are going to look like. And of course, I'll choose the lead units when I get to it. Uh, one thing I want to point out is Washington is close by, and so is uh, Lafayette. And if we take a look here, we'll see that Washington has no combat modifier for his leadership at zero. But his leadership modifier for uh, rallies and morale checks of units he's stacked with is four and one. Uh, now, how this is used with Washington, he can, he can influence uh, morale checks and rally attempts to adjacent units, as well as units that he stacked with, which is unusual. Normally you can't uh, modify those checks with a leader unless you're stacked with them. Uh, he has the ability to influence the morale and rally attempts of units he's adjacent with as well, in which case that second number, the 1, is what's used to modify those rolls. So there is that. The plus 4 is any units that he's stacked with will get a plus 4 on their morale tests and uh, rally attempts. He's not stacked with anyone, but he is adjacent to this stack here. And there's a bunch of pinned units here. Now, let me remove these. There will be a combat. I didn't move out of these hexes, which will influence my morale. I'm going to continue the fight. I've got my horse here and two strength points of British Dragoons and horse. And my infantry. So this will be a combat. In addition, I have Pulaski's... Legion. He's a demi-leader. I think I called him a demi-brigade before. Uh, he gives a bonus to other units involved in the combat that are Dragoons. He does have that. Uh, so he's going to be involved in this combat as well. And like I said, Washington can influence this the morale checks and leadership checks of the units he's adjacent to. So there is that. So 
We're going to see what happens with this combat. So, not very crucial, uh, but it might boost the morale of the Patriots if they're successful here, taking out these two weaker units. It would be a strength four for the Patriots going against strength two. So, we got two to one odds going into this. All right, so let's resolve these combats over here and show you the results of this. All right, I fought this combat up here, and yes, it was a disaster for the Patriots. It just didn't work. The British chose skirmish uh, because of Washington's presence. He was adjacent to this hex where a combat was, combat unit was located. Uh, chose turn flank, and unfortunately, it resulted in a minus one to the combat die roll, which is bad for the Patriots. In addition, there was a plus one and a minus one for various little situations here. Uh, so ultimately, it was just a minus one to the die roll. I think the net effect, or the net roll, was a zero in this case. Uh, this unit had to retreat, fail the morale test, even with Washington's uh, bonus of plus one. Uh, this unit also failed its morale test. And the lead unit was Pulaski's, and unfortunately, he was eliminated. He took a step loss, and he only has one side, so he was blank on the reverse. So he was eliminated. And the British were successful. They fended off the uh, the weak attack of the Patriots. So that combat has been resolved. The net effect was that the British gained a victory point, for one. And they also went up in army morale to 15. They're back in high morale. This is the British. And the Patriots dropped one in their army morale. They're now in six. They're still in the fatigued zone. So they suffered that penalty of minus one to their uh, morale ratings on the counter. The British no longer suffer that. And now we're going to fight the rest of these combats down here and Howe and Sterling's forces. All right, resolved all the other close combats. Uh, these two units engaged the enemy here. Uh, took a step loss. Seventh Virginia was flipped. And that was unfortunate. That affected victory points as well as morale. The Patriots are at five currently. Uh, these guys passed them around, held their ground. Uh, so these guys are still in position to fight again. Um, yeah, this combat down here, let's see. I believe he was here. He was the lead unit. The enemy unit was here, which is now located here, disrupted. Uh, this was some success for the Patriots. Uh, disrupted this strength four British unit. It retreated down this direction here. And this unit followed up. This unit did not move into the hex because of stacking limits. Uh, so the Patriots were successful here. This final combat, it was these two units going against him, and uh, the British held out, and they managed to hold their ground. This unit was forced to retreat. It's now located there. This unit passed its morale. It's holding its position. Uh, so that was unfortunate, and they had good odds here too. Uh, modifiers amounted to nothing. Tactics card did not change anything. It was zero modifier in this combat. And, yeah, so that's that's too bad. And as far as the morale situation, this is where we currently are. The Patriots are at five. They did drop down, unfortunately. Uh, relatively unsuccessful turn so far for them. British are up to 15. They're in high morale. They use their printed morale ratings. Units are not penalized. Uh, these guys, unfortunately, are back down to suffering a minus two on all their units' uh, printed morale ratings. Now let's jump over to the Chad's Ferry at the Brandywine Creek with Knifhausen. See how well he does in the upcoming melee. Oh, and we also have this one up here as well to resolve. Let's do that one next, then. All right, that was relatively easy. Uh, tactics card chosen by the Dragoons was Withdraw. And I believe theirs was skirmish. So basically, this unit gets to retreat one hex, and the combat isn't resolved. Uh, however, this infantry unit does advance into the vacated hex. So there basically was no combat. Uh, so yeah, there you go. There's the Dragoons running once again. And finally, we're going to resolve this combat. And it's going to be Gniffhausen. He's going to have the full tactics card choice. He's got strength three. Um... Very under strength, going against the Patriots here, which are strength six. So it's going to be two to one odds, three to six. Uh, but there's no other commander for the Patriots to use tactics cards. And they are attacking across the primary ford. 
So let's resolve this, folks. And that's that. Resolved. Tactics. I think the British took stand fast. Going against uh, the Patriots skirmish. Uh, which is a minus one. In fact, the total modifier for this was two to one odds in favor of the Patriots. However, there was a minus four modifier to the combat, which is bad for the Patriots. So it was really a combat they really shouldn't have fought. But you have no choice. You have to fight it. Um, would have been more useful for them to use the withdraw uh, tactic if they had that option. But that's not the way it went. And all three units, including the lead unit, were forced to retreat. One hex, they are now here. And, of course, the defender cannot advance. So, Gniffhausen is still on the opposite side of the ford. And, yeah, nothing changes with army morale. Victory points stays the same. And that's it. That finishes the close combat and the Patriots' turn. There we go, folks. That is the turn for the Patriots. It wasn't very productive. I'm actually kind of surprised. I thought I'd get a lot more done with them. But, alas, I did not. And it's going to be the British part of turn 9. And the British will have some reinforcements, one of which is Fraser's 2nd Battalion, which comes on here. And the Black Watch, which comes on up here where Howe arrived. So there'll be two regiments of British coming on. Don't know what difference that's going to make. And the British will have an opportunity to rally some disrupted units, which will boost their morale. As you can see, it's 15 currently. It's in the high morale. That's good. So this will boost them up if they do some more rallying. Get back where we uh, need to be. Uh, as far as the Patriots, you can see back here, they are on the 5. They're at negative 2 to all printed unit morale ratings. Uh, they're wavering once again. They've been up here for a little bit, but they keep dropping down. The lowest they've been is four, and they're still at five currently. So that's good for the Patriots' side of things. And victory points are five for the Patriots, 18 and a half for the British. So it's looking good for at least a marginal victory for the British. Uh, of course, if the Patriots drop to zero in this, they're going to... British will win a substantial victory. Because uh, it looks very daunting if they're going to get a decisive victory. The British, that is. Again, they have to capture either DeWerthen or the road to Philadelphia. I don't think that's going to happen. Three more, turn, three more turns in the battle. Uh, four, actually, if we include uh, the British in turn nine. So, yeah, that's it. All in all, I'm very, really enjoying this. I, I thought I would do more. Uh, at this point for the Patriots, did not. But you know what? That's okay. I've got Washington committed up here. Lafayette, he can move. Normally he has to stay with Washington, but uh, one time he could move and join a combat. He stacks himself with some friendly units in a combat, and it'll give up a column shift in favor of the Patriots. So I'm holding on to that for a, an important combat at this point. But I've got Washington involved. Lafayette's up there. Pulaski's gone, unfortunately. That was unfortunate. This was just a bad uh, go for the Patriots. Uh, they didn't really have much success. Stalemate over here. Uh, they did throw back and disrupt one of the British units here. And uh, they had to retreat over here. So that's unfortunate. It didn't go too well. All right, folks, we're going to go into the next turn. It's going to be for the British, their half of turn nine. And we will see what they can do. Uh, right now, I can tell you right off the bat, get these troops rallied and start a big push here on the Ford with Knifhausen's force. I really want to attack here. So you're going to look forward to that in the upcoming British turn. And you'll see likewise up there with Howe as he comes on. I'm going to push hard here as well. I really want to get Howe up on the left, moving up in this direction and assaulting that uh, house, uh, the Birmingham Meeting House. So we're going to really push hard in the next turn for the British. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed. Like, share, subscribe, all that. Leave me some comments. If you catch where I made a mistake or an error, let me know. I'll make the correction immediately in the next video. All right, folks, you guys hang in there. It's only going to get better. Take care, folks.